Hello and welcome back and here we are at the Sonority Solutions Day here at Wembley in the UK and that's right today we've been learning lots and lots and lots and lots about what's going on with Sonority right now, some of the stuff they've been developing and honing some of the stuff that already exists and this video is simply about covering everything we learned today bit by bit. Straight away off the bat though I will say if you've come to this video for hardware, seriously there is one bit of hardware we're going to talk about it and it's at the bottom of the screen you can find it on the chapters. But, and we've got no control over the light in this room, so I'm sorry if it's a bit dumb for you. But first and foremost, um, they were talking a lot more about the, the storage trends and they were talking a lot more about how they've occupied the percentage of number of similarity units out there has grown and comparing it against general growth trends in storage anyway. I mean, how much do you think of the growth of Synology's product base and the number of the deployments of those units are actually because of their product and how much of it is just the industry as a whole and people moving away from cloud? I think it's a 50-50. Definitely the industry is growing. People want to get off the cloud because all of the security issues. They want their data. They want to own their data. They want to run their our servers on their premises for s several reasons. And so it, the market is growing itself and also Synology is taking more and more of the market share it, well, away from big mm -hmm. brands like our SLB and WT and, and other brands. So definitely it's a mixture of those two things. But the more they push against that ceiling that's largely occupied by EMC, by NetApp, by those large scale things, that even now when I look at the side of my notes there, a lot of the stuff that they talked about today, and we talked about a few, to a few people about this, and one of the concerning points, and not concerning, was people talking about how they expected a lot more new things at this event. But what it really was, was an establishment of the status quo. And part of that was the things that are rolled out this year in DSM 7.2. Some of the more proprietary storage focused ones, such as Zoom for Write One Tree, many support there with Write Only, uh, the volume encryption, of course. Then there was the adaptive login. And of course, then they started talking a lot more about the immutable, the word immutable snapshots, the word immutable backup. And for those that were coming to this event here the background that were thinking there was going to be a lot of new stuff it was really just fleshing out and explaining about a lot of what dsm is put on the table in 2023 going into 2024 we will touch again on a couple of the newer things later on in the video i think that was quite smart of them i know we don't fully see eye to eye about some of this event and um, the way you suddenly do approach a lot of the presentation of this kind of preaching to the choir in a way that a lot of the stuff they were showing the audience already knew about but I will still say that it, I would prefer stability. Knowing stability exists, it's one thing to show lots and lots of new stuff, but at least it may be confident that they are doubling down on the software that they're running with a lot of those applications and services. I mean, for you, when you hear them talking about the petabyte layer, does that excite you or do you see any? Well, normally the home market wouldn't care about petabytes, really. It's, it's still terabytes, a couple of terabytes, that's all they need. Well, you can see that Synology is trying to push through to enterprise market, and that's where we talk petabytes. And lots of people have, have heard, been complaining that uh, Synology couldn't just part, like pass the one, terabyte, uh, one petabyte mark, but eventually they did that, and today we could see them talking about five, six terabytes of uh, petabyte solutions. So there are definitely there is demand for that amount of storage for sure, mm. and they are they are getting there for sure. But that does still make me come back to the point about the support of third-party drives like 20 and 22 TB. And even now, they're talking now about Seagate and the HAMR uh, type drives and the 30 TB ones. I'm just kind of surprised um, that, yes, they've broken into the petabyte layer with their 18 TB drives, but technically there are larger drives out there where, to be honest, 24 bays and even some of those other ones, they're getting pretty darn close. But it's still good that they're still talking about it on their solutions and know that their software can do that. But it's not just about the bare metal, of course, because they also spent a lot of time talking, and hopefully we've got some graphics on screen. They were also talking a lot more about C2. Now, again, I didn't see anything new about C2 in this whole presentation. We've been here, what, six, seven hours? We've had, like, nine coffees? And we're still good, and they were talking a lot more, probably more than I've heard them talk about, about C2 object storage, which, again, I think they could stand to talk a lot more about. I think a lot of users that watch this, whether you are, an existing NAS user, or you are a NAS user, potentially. If you are someone that's coming off the cloud, particularly the higher end, your AWSs, you know, your backblaze or whatever, you'll know that the two main costs of those things is one, the overall capacity, and two, the downloading of that data when you need it for recovery purposes. And obviously things like the speed of it is a big factor as well. So not only are them talking about the object storage in conjunction with cloud bare metal, but they were talking a lot more about the versioning, something people do not talk about enough and they went into a lot more detail about that with their object storage. That was really, really good. 
Um, on top of that, what I'm looking at my notes here, they went into a better breakdown of the pricing, which is pretty good. And I hopefully got that on screen. Otherwise, I'll put something on screen about just what the difference is with that pricing strategy. Um, and then on top of that, they are one of the only providers out there currently that are not only providing that cloud space, but also providing the bare metal. And that's one thing if you do go for some of the Microsoft type options out there, which by the way, are extraordinarily expensive. It was still very, very good that they have that ace in the hole where they can go, we're providing the cloud storage, the object cloud storage, it's five fold a breadcrumb level, but we've also got bare metal. So I think it was good that they reiterated that point at this presentation. Yes, exactly. And they were actually doing uh, on screen comparisons, how it would uh, result in what sort of costs. And they, they, they did compare how much Synology uh, it would cost, how much Microsoft, how much uh, Google and other brands. So they can reduce the cost significantly. It's a fraction, mm -hmm. fraction of, of what others are charging. So that's a good, a good sign that they keep the prices uh, affordable. Also, it's a combined solution as well. So when you are getting, you're getting more bang for your buck. Yeah. So you, if you are engaging in the cloud, today was probably one of the more convincing times I've seen someone talking about their cloud service, particularly in this current climate when cloud storage providers right now, so by cloud, are driving up their costs. They're driving up that, those API calls and charging more for the download of that data. And now is a very good time for them. And clearly they know that to talk a lot more about that cloud. But I would like to go on a very small tangent. We didn't really plan this too much, but as you can tell, I will say right now that in the middle, flat bang in the middle of all of this at their event, um, do look them up after this, uh, a solution called Black Box. And it seems to be very early development. They're not a Synology partner from what I understand right now, but after this video, do me a favor and look them up. It's effectively portable NAS storage in like a big Peli case, which has got an SD card reader inside, semi-automatic backups internally. It's an interesting product that was on show here, wasn't it? Yes, that's, what, that's for sure. Because people throughout the years, especially when they are shooting somewhere off of the site, they need some sort of solution which um, they can take to the places. There's there's this possibility that it's going to drop on mm. of the another you know, rack, rack or whatever, uh, and it could cause uh, a damage and, and the data could be lost. Sometimes, even coming back from the uh, scene to the studio, could cause a, a loss of, of data on the SD card. So it, in, in this situation, they finish shooting, they straight away put the SD cards into the um, the card reader. Everything gets offloaded to the Synology and backed up under RAID, whichever you choose, either it's uh, RAID um, it was, uh, RAID 5, RAID 6, whatever. And your data is safe already on the site, and then you can go to office and start editing through mm -hmm. 10 gig if you want it. And even when we were, we were at this stand, a few users were asking them, well, why would I not just back up to an NAS? And the obvious answer for anyone, by the way, and I'm sure one of you watching this, is that to transfer large amounts, terabytes upon terabytes of data from a long distance. Sometimes it's actually cheaper to get a NAS and stick it on a plane, because sometimes the amount of data is just not useful in terms of data transmission. This seemed to be a portable device it was effectively a NAS in a cargo crate that you could take around but it had all the peripherals it was all baked in with like that peli level phone that could be adapted and I think it is definitely be something for you guys to keep an eye on because yes it's going to be expensive and yes it's going to be very very niche but then so was IO safe and that's something we have talked about in the channel many many times as a destruction proof NAS but returning back to the Synology presentation I will say right now there was a lot of talk about ransomware, the statistics of ransomware, the restoration statistics and how much actually gets pulled back. I mean, again, I don't know quite where the statistics come from, if it's an internal survey or what, but there is no denying whether it is you're coming to a Synology Expo, a Microsoft Expo or a frigging Google Expo online via Zoom. I will say right now that ransomware is up. It's just up everywhere you yeah. can see why synology have gone down this immutable backup route while they've been hammering this thing like crazy yeah exactly someone was measuring actually it costs what was it 60 billion or six billion mm. dollars every year uh, due to ransomware attacks and uh, they definitely have stepped up the game and, and created um, a safe solution for for a customer thanks to unmutable uh backup uh, you know folders and and version control and things like that so you can reverse your data very easily and they were one of the first brands i could see that were talking a lot more about immutable stat shots as well people talk thing about immutable and by the way for those that aren't aware immutable means data is put somewhere and it cannot be changed or altered maliciously or otherwise but having that feature 
talked about in terms of snapshots. Again, it's not new per se at the time of recording this video, but it was good that they really went into a lot more detail about it. Now, returning to my notes, moving away from that, there was one thing that they I was looking forward to hearing about, and then we heard about it for the better part of about 15 seconds, and that was the integration of AI in some of their services. Let's face it, 2023 has been the year of AI. From your chat GPT to Bing suddenly in your version of Skype going, hello, do you need a hand? It's everywhere. And it's good that they are integrating it. And when we were in Taiwan, those that follow the channel know that over in Taiwan, they were showing demonstrations of the integration of these AI services in the mail agent and in the office agent. I was really looking forward to seeing that today. And it wasn't here. What we saw was them referring to it. And that is it. They said it's going to be rolling out next year, but the fact it wasn't present kind of makes me think we're going to be waiting for that one. And I know there's mixed feelings on AI, how much it really requires remote level access on the internet or some AI engine outside to do the, the bidding. But I kind of hope I'd seen it because I actually quite want to see it. Yeah, exactly. But uh, what I could understand from the uh, delivery that the AI, the way the AI is going to be introduced is just going to be as like autocorrect, like a Grammarly. So it's going to, whatever replies you create yourself is just going to improve the re replies or to some degree automate, but it's all, everything to do with this email replies or uh, document uh, generation is nothing to do with uh, op operating system level AI. When, when you can ask uh, OS to do certain things mm -hmm. like, like you would do in Google Analytics, for example, with a little bit of AI involved. So that's literally like Grammarly. Uh, well, I, think, I think if, if what they showed at the competitive presentations at their partner event was true, I think it's more than that. It's a comparable, I would say, to more chat GPT. But again, we don't know enough. And that's what was really annoying, that it wasn't here that we've got these question marks. Oh, we could carry on talking about stuff that we already know about and is present on these applications. Things like high availability on Mail Plus. I knew it was there, but they actually did demonstrations of how it works. And if you don't know about it, hopefully there'll be links to that in the, de in the description. Stuff that I really, really liked. But things that weren't really touched on, again, was that new Synology camera. Those that follow the blog will know that we posted an article earlier today about the new camera. It looks more like a desktop type model, and it's not like the PoE external ones. This one seems like an indoors camera but it also looks like it kind of looks like a normal webcam or a baby monitor almost now initial reaction from the people we spoke to here was mixed because there wasn't a lot of information about it and it was although tangentially referred to during the presentation we didn't see much more of it there wasn't a physical unit here on demonstration but on the grapevine we had kind of heard like uh, exploration or at least references and again big grain of salt tbc etc this idea of a video conferencing software now it could be mistranslations it could be people referring to this and not really you know calling it the wrong thing in conjunction with this but at the same time that would make a lot of sense for Synology to integrate a video conferencing element into Synology office if they did that, it would be comparable to Office 365, utilizing Skype and communication tools like that. It would be like Google with a lot of their communication tools for, you know, chatting online and video conferencing. And in that framework, this camera makes a lot more sense, this new camera. The idea, and it seems like an obvious omission to not integrate video conferencing into that Synology Office suite because you've got the means to record the footage, you've got the option to stream the footage, you've got surveillance applications as well to get the job done. Now, again, this is a massive rumour and a massive, you know, TBC. But does that make sense to you? Yeah, it does look like a baby monitor camera. And well, I was expecting for something else like BDZ camera. With all these AI um, features they are rolling into the uh, surveillance solution, they could have some sort of camera which can follow around and Judo, not have a baby monitor. They, you know, babies are calm. <laughs> Um, and, but, but that's really it. There wasn't much more in terms of new stuff at this event. We, again, we're trying to keep things as concise as possible. As I go through my notes, we will be doing a follow-up video to this. And if you're in the Zoom member circle, then you'll know that we are doing a Zoom uh, in the second week of December where we'll be going into way more detail about this. We'll link to that in the description. But in summary, how did you find today? I, I arrived here excited to, to learn new things, but uh, I didn't. I, I, I didn't have excitement at the end because I was thinking, like lots of people are expecting that there will be some new models that introduced, something replaced, you, so you get, you can finally refresh your your you know stuff, your servers, get something new, something more powerful, but it wasn't here. So, see, 
I, I'm slightly different. I'm very much of the mind that I like to see stability, and I like that they fleshed out their existing product ranges. Don't get me wrong, once again, they're preaching to the choir to a point, because a lot of people that attend these events already know about their products, and these are events that are taking place in all around the world. They normally do these in lots of different locations. I'm not sure if they're doing one in Germany, but if they are, they're tuned to that, and they're bound to do one in the US. But again, I'm I'm not going to say I didn't come here hoping for more and there wasn't much in the way of hardware. I'm disappointed in that regard. But at the same time, I at least have to acknowledge that, that fleshing out the SM7.2 and doubling down on that feature set, at least is that word stability again. And that, that's something I like to see. Yeah. I just wish we saw more of those plans for the future. Like exactly. They alluded to the idea. Exactly. I want to see a plan. Like, a, Give me like a plan, future plan, what, mm. what your targets are. And then at least I know next time I'm going to come see you, I'll c hold you accountable. Did you actually hit those goals or not? Mm -hmm. This time it's like, there's no goals set. It's just like what we did. This is mm -hmm. what we did for the past 12 months. And that's it. It, right. it. it will be interesting to see if Synology drops like an overall overarching event like that in every year online and like a YouTube live stream drop where a lot of those features are shown off. Yes, and because at the end of the day, it was Solutions mm -hmm. Day. It wasn't a keynote event. So I'll give them that. Every year, year on year. At the end of the year has always been when Synology have shown off the big guns. And this year I saw more in Taiwan at their event than I saw here today at a larger scale event. But again, I try not to be holding them too negative on that one. But this has been everything we learn at the Synology Solution Day here in the UK. Again, we'll be following this up more detail article, hopefully linked to the description very, very soon. And of course, there is that live seminar that we're going to be doing, or seminar Zoom, whatever you want to call it, over on the NAS campaign in a circle. If you're in that, check your inbox. You should have got an invite already. If you're not, again, you can find out how to do that in the description. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. It's not been the most informative, but at least we held our hands together, didn't we? Apart from that, Eddie, nice to see you. Nice to see you. I will see you next time.